So it's April 26, 2021, and Mortal Kombat came out on Friday, and Phil is the big movie buff that I know, and also in Canada. So I'm going to go to Phil. He didn't see the movie yet, but um, I ended up watching it on Friday. I don't want to obviously okay. spoil anything, but Phil's going to let me know what his thoughts were on the trailer and uh, what he's expecting for uh, from it. So Phil, go ahead. Okay, so yeah, I haven't seen it yet. I'm very disappointed that I haven't seen it. I'm very excited to see it. Normally I'm on top of this stuff, but I gotta say, when I saw the trailer, I was really excited. Like, they were late in releasing the trailer because they wanted to see how things were going. I don't think they released the trailer till February, and like, it only came out last week, so like, it was a late t turnaround. Yeah. But I was super excited. I was excited by the cast, number one, because um, everyone sort of seemed to fit with what they were going with. And this is what I liked about their, their casting choices, is they didn't get any real A-listers. Not that the first movie did, but like it, this sort of movie has to rely a lot on the character and a lot on the story for people to accept it. So they, they filled the roles with these guys that not a lot of people have probably heard of. So you can really focus on what's going to happen to them. Like I can't I can't pronounce some of their names because I'm not very good at pronunciation. But like the guy that plays Scorpion, I know he's been in the Wolverine. He's been in some other uh, bigger movies. The guy who played Shang Tsung uh, was in the Dark Knight, or yeah, the Dark Knight, the second Batman movie. Uh, Liu Kang's actor was also in the Power Rangers movie, the new one. So like I know a few of them here and there. Um, and I gotta say, like, it looks beautiful. Like, the costumes look great. The locations they were shot, the, yeah. the location for Outworld, the, they, they shot it in Australia at an abandoned salt mine. Wow. Which kind of gives that, like, desolate feeling. So I was really excited about that. Um, and uh, uh, Joe Taslam, who plays Sub Zero, looks amazing. The costumes themselves look probably the best because those are costumes that I was worried about because it'd be easy for them to look goofy from, like, the game to the movie to make it look like they're just, like, playing dress up. Yeah. But I like that they kind of leaned into, like, the Asian, like, samurai-inspired aspect with the colors of the characters, of the characters, especially for Scorp Scorpion and Sub-Zero. So it was super catchy to me that I was like, okay, like, that, I, that's a believable, like, outfit that he would wear. It didn't look like he was playing, you know, Halloween. So I'm really excited to see uh, what they've done. Yeah, so I don't, like, stop me. I'm not going to really give any too much about the story, but um, the costume was something that I looked at right away, and I was like, okay, like, it wasn't what we're used to, obviously, with the whole, you know, like like you said, like, the Halloween costumes. I was, I think I was Sub-Zero back in, like, grade five or something, but... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah I, I was Scorpion with, like, a yellow... I had, like, two yellow towels that I just, like, put over my shoulders. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the thing with, with that, and I don't know, like, the cast that was kind of torn on, like, they did a good job, for sure, like, the acting was pretty good, I, I really, good thing you touched on the locations, because the setting was really good as well, there wasn't too much CGI, which is something that is probably easy to, you know, do, go overboard with in these kind of movies, yeah. so it looked kind of natural, too, which was good, the only thing I was going to say, Phil, um, is we're used to certain characters being, like, good and bad, and it wasn't, like, a complete flip of it, but there was some, I guess, I guess trying to like figure out for yourself who was who at some points in the movie, which I was a little yeah. bit surprised with compared to like the first two, even if we're going to consider <laughs> Annihilation a movie. <laughs> we can consider it something. So that, I guess that's really what was difficult. Like the, the movie ends and I will kind of give you this, which you probably know about anyways. It looks like they're already like looking to like the end of the first one leads to a second movie from what it seems. Right. And that's, sort of what I expected. I didn't expect them to do this as a one-off because Mortal Kombat is such a broad, uh, a broad thing, like a broad story now told over since, you know, the nineties that I didn't expect it to, um, to end up this movie. So the one thing that's bothered me about the reviews that I have seen, and, and again, this is kind of hard to dance around without spoilers and stuff is a lot of people have complained that there was no real tournament, but my only point to that is like, I don't know what people are expecting with the tournament. Like, are you expecting brackets? Because if that's the yeah. case, like, eventually you're going to have all the good guys win because you want the good guys to win. And, like, you you and I are both sports guys, so, like, what would, would, would you have in the final? Like, your good guys have to lose at some point, which means they have to die because that's the rules of Mortal Kombat. Like, the first game was a tournament because it was a video game, right? Yeah. And, like, conceptually, you're like, oh, it's a tournament to see who is the best ever. But, like, 
you know, to put that into the screen just like would be super difficult, like to make it look structured without it seeming boring, without it seeming like a sporting event. So they had that in the first movie too. Like everyone's like, oh, because the first movie's great. I love the first movie. It's Incredible. Of course, nostalgia. But it wasn't a tournament either. Like there was no like there was one match between Sonya and Kano in, in front of Shang Tsung, and then there was like a couple of others. But then like Reptile and Liu Kang. That wasn't part of the tournament. Yeah. Like, Liu Kang... And if that movie ended as a tournament, like, Liu Kang and Johnny Cage are both undefeated. So, they should fight each other then. Yes, okay, so th there's a few things with that. Okay, so, the thing that I... The, so, I'm just making notes as you're going through. The first thing I would say is... The thing with Mortal Kombat, that was the first one. And this is, I guess, a reboot from the movie was... Was it 95, 96, something like that, right? Yeah, it was, it was, 90, it was 95. And, yeah, so this is, like... A so, this is a reboot of that movie. So, now, that being said... Um, I'm just going to say, like, with the storyline, and, and Shang Tsung said this, obviously, in both the movies, uh, the Outer World has won the last nine, and, and Earth has to win, because if there's ten in a row, they take over. That being yeah. said, um, if Outworld wins, where do you go with this movie? I guess you could do something else, but there would have to be more writing, because as far as I know with the game, there's not much of a story for that, is there? No, so, and that's what happened in the original game, like... Because when they did the original game, it was a very shoddy sort of story because, like, it was it was an arcade game. Like, yeah. it wasn't like a, an RPG. It wasn't there was no home consoles. Like, it was an arcade game. So the story's been pieced together and changed as time has gone on because they've been able to do those things with storytelling. So the first game ends with Liu Kang being victorious, saving the day, stopping Outworld. The second game, they moved the tournament to Outworld, and I'm trying to remember correctly 100 percent but in the second game they sort of do it as like okay it's a winner take all like if earth realm beats out world in out world that will we will never challenge again that'll be the end of it yeah and then earth realm wins and then shao khan basically says oh well f it we're invading anyway yeah they're gonna say he, he takes his ball and he goes home yeah yeah then he starts and then he starts invading earth anyways that leads into the third game so like they could follow that sort of similar trajectory but not to get too like too off topic here, but this is th my biggest point with adaptations of anything, of books, of TV shows, of video games. It doesn't matter. I don't want it to play out exactly like the source material, really? like the comic book, like the book, because I've already seen that. I've already read it. I know how the Mortal Kombat story goes in the game. Give me something that's close to it, but still different, and give me some surprises. Like you know what I mean. I don't know. I don't want to say that you're by yourself with that thought, but I think that a lot more people would lean towards what they know because although they've read, let's say, the book or played the video game, they don't know what the I guess like sh let's compare it to like a Shakespeare play made into a movie. Like it's it's like a carbon copy that you're making from a book to something else. And I didn't read or watch any of the Lord of the Rings or Harry Potter, so I know. Forgive me for that. That's a big yeah. ask for forgiveness. But even with those ones, that and another one that comes to mind was that uh, Fifty Shades of Grey that people were unhappy about. Like all these ones that go from book to film is very tough. And I think that in order to make the viewer happy, at least for the first one, I think that for the first one, you probably want to like set the tone, stick to whatever's happening. And then after that, like I said, even in this Mortal Kombat case, there's, as far as I know, there's no comic books before the game, was there? No, no, the game was the first, Ed Boon and Tobias, they put that all together. Um, and then, like, there have been comics and cartoons and stuff that have come out, like, since it, because obviously it grew into, like, this massive property. Yeah, but now you, the point, what I was going to get at now is you have so much freedom because there's no, there's no script you have to follow, right? Right, exactly, exactly. And no, I totally understand that, and I totally respect that, because um, it's it's something that's near and dear to a lot of people's hearts. And, and I get the flip side of it. Like, I understand the flip side is, like, you want to see it sort of shot for shot from the game into the movie because, you know... You're you're seeing it on a different medium, right? right? So I understand that completely. Like if you read a book, like if I if you read uh, Lord of the Rings, let's say, and, and there's a specific scene in the book that you're like, oh, I would really I can imagine it in my head, and then they do the movie and it's completely different or they change some aspect. I could definitely see how that would be disappointing or or misleading or, or whatever you want to call it. Um, so I, I totally get that side of it as well. I I, I hope this movie hooked enough people to get a that's the thing. That I want to yeah. You know, because I, I guess I haven't seen this yet. I'm watching it this week, regardless of what happens. That's non-negotiable. Yeah. Um, but I, I hope it, it hooks people enough to get um, a sequel. And like, it's hard because comic or 
video game movies have historically not done well. Like, just, there's not a long, a good track record of, well, you know. Well, uh, which ones are there, Phil? Like, I know, obviously, there's Mortal Kombat. Street Fighter was a big bomb that had a massive cast. So, the first Mortal Kombat, too, like, if you want to, if you really want to talk about it, like, it, it's become a, a cult classic, let's say, in that a lot of people retrospectively look back on it and, and, and subconsciously compare it to other video game movies and go, oh, like, it's the best that we've seen. Yeah. That doesn't necessarily mean it's good. Right, like Christopher Lambert as Raiden is not what Raiden was in the video game. Yeah. Right, you have Scorpion and Sub Zero on the same team. Their backstory, their history, the fact that they're enemies isn't really touched upon at all. And you know, it is in this one. Yeah, and that's what and that's what I was most excited to see yeah. is that they touch on that. And I saw the clip of the opening. The first seven minutes got released yeah. uh, online, and I watched it sort of as like my own little teaser for it. Um, and that their backstory was actually really flushed out well in that web series they did back when we were, we were in, in school. Yeah, like about ten yeah. years ago. Yeah, yeah, and so that was good. But other than Mortal Kombat, yeah, they did Street Fighter with John Claude Van Damme, which is funny because he was supposed to be in Mortal Kombat as Johnny Cage because that's who they based the character off. Oh, of. in the original he, Mortal Kombat. Yeah, because they, well, they based so Johnny Cage in the game was based off John Claude Van Damme. Oh wow! Like that was. That was the Makes sense. Yeah, the Hollywood, well, the, you know, the martial artist that became a Hollywood star. Yeah. Makes sense, yeah. Yeah, obsessed with kicking people. So they wanted him for the movie, but he turned it down and did Street Fighter instead. Which was with, a big uh, mistake. Ra- oh, yeah, big mistake. The best part about the Street Fighter movie was Raul and Julia as M. Bison, and he was dying of cancer when he did the movie. Oh, and yeah. he only did it for, uh, for his kids and for the money. <laughs> and he was the best part of that whole movie. Yeah. <laughs> That one I haven't seen since back then, but I remember it was really bad. I remember Blanca, Delzim, and, and Cami, and all those. Like, Street Fighter had a great cast, too. It's just too... Like, both those games I remember playing growing up, but Mortal Kombat 2 was the one that I played more, and then also Street Fighter 2 Turbo on, on Super Nintendo. Yes. Those games I had yeah. so much fun with. Yeah, and the Street Fighter movie was just not... It just was not done well. They did a second one, The Legend of Chun-Li, which also failed miserably. Yeah. Um, what other... I'm trying to think. They've done Max Payne with Mark Wahlberg. Again, okay, I didn't see that it, one. It flopped. I didn't see it. Uh, the only one recently that's actually done really well that maybe broke the curse was the Sonic the Hedgehog movie. And that's mostly because they redesigned Sonic because the internet bullied them into doing it. Oh, really? Um, I didn't see Sonic. I didn't, uh, was it, I, I didn't think it got good reviews, though. It, 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 I can't remember what it got for reviews. It was a lot of fun. Jim Carrey as, uh, as uh, the villain. I can't remember his name. Oh my god, I'm so disappointed I'm blanking on it. It doesn't yeah, matter. I don't remember... Uh, all I remember is Sonic and Tails, like, from the video games. I don't really remember any of the villains. I know that he looked like um, like a, a robot man. Dr. Robotnik. Oh, there we go. <laughs> um, yeah, Jim Carrey was great as the villain. Um, and they redesigned Sonic, because I remember when the first trailer came out, there was, like, hate over the how, how he looked. And the studio actually was like, yeah, you're right. He's pretty garbage. We're going to redo it. Wow. And they spent millions of dollars in redesigning Sonic. After the movie's done, they redesigned him and then, like, resent everything back out. And, yeah. and people loved it because he actually looked more like the video game. And it was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. That reminds me, Phil, of a movie that we talked a lot about. Um, Suicide Squad, after Deadpool came out and they reshot everything. So... Suicide Squad is another one that's touchy for me because David Ayer, who directed it, said the same things that Zack Snyder did, that the studio made him make all these changes and cut a bunch of stuff out of it that they shot. Like, there was a whole subplot with Jared Leto and the Joker that they cut out of all this footage and stuff. And people have said that, like, if they'd left it in the movie, like, his Joker would have made more sense than what we saw, because he seemed really disjointed, almost like he was in a different movie. Yep. But it's because they cut all this stuff out, they changed the tone. DC has a long history of trying to be like Marvel, when they should just try to be like DC. Yep, exactly. Because yeah. if, if you want to see a Marvel movie, go watch a Marvel movie. If I want to watch something dark, gritty, and a little bit depressing, I'll go watch DC. That's the point. The point is to be different, not copy them. Because if you do, then people are going to go, well, why am I watching this when I can just go watch Marvel? Yeah, well, that's the thing. First of all, you're copying it. Second of all, you're not doing a good job of copying it either, right? Well, that's the thing. Because then, then you're not, you're not yourself. Like yeah, you're just playing yourself. Exactly. No, you're not being yourself, I'm saying. It's like, if I went in there and I tried to deadlift 600 pounds like you're doing, I'm going to embarrass myself. <laughs> and that's what DC's doing, trying to be Marvel, right? Like, stick to who you are. <laughs> exactly. Like, DC has, like, DC 
DC should lean into the darkness. They should lean into like the dark. All those Batman movies that were incredible. They're not like comic book movies. They're like just Hollywood movies. And that's the point. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. You know, like everyone wants to, you know, get on Marvel because they're the greatest of all time. Blah 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 blah. But like, there's no real stakes. Like nobody like really dies in Marvel movies. You know, like yep. the hero always dies. We don't get any recurring vill- or the villains always die. Sorry. The only real recurring villains we get were Thanos briefly and Loki. Like, the rest of them, they all kill off. There's no... It, it's the same... Marvel's formula is basically the same, right? It's like, they come together, they have to fight the villain, then there's a big showdown at the end, the villain's dead, move on to the next movie. Explosions, <laughs> murder, and move on to the next one, exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, destroy a city and care. Everybody, everyone gets on Man of Steel because, like, oh my god, they caused all this destruction and blah, blah, blah. It's like, yeah. That's what's supposed to happen. They leveled New York, too. Yeah. But nobody wants to talk about that. <laughs> Like, give me a break, guys. Like, let DC be different. But we got kind of off topic from the video game movies. There, ha- Basically, there haven't been a, a, a good history of video game movies out there. Yeah, but so even like I said, like, it's tough to even think of them. And I haven't played video games in, uh, man, like, high school, to be honest. Like, I've, I've dabbled in sports games here and there. But the only other one that I can think of, Phil, and I know they didn't make a movie that I played on PlayStation 1 briefly, was Killer Instinct, if you remember that. And uh, I know they did Need for Speed with... Um, okay. Oh, yeah. that's his face from Breaking Bad, not Brian Cranston, the other one. Okay, um, yeah, if we're getting into ones that are not, uh, like, combat ones, then I definitely, there's probably more if we're getting into that kind of stuff, too, right? Oh, yeah. I was just thinking well, about fighting ones, ones yeah. but Need for Speed, I didn't see that either, how did that do? Uh, I never saw it, yeah. I, it wasn't really my forte. So Say no more. Um, yeah, there's definitely not a good, a good history of video game movies. <laughs> But that's the thing, I feel like, uh, okay, so another thing I wrote down, so I'll just try and get to these points. Um, did, I know it's the opening week still, and you didn't see it, I saw it. Uh, now, with theaters being closed in Ontario, and pro- I'm guessing limited capacity over North America and across the world, I'm just wondering, did they capture and win over enough fans to get a budget, to make money off the box office, to make a second movie? So, I know it wasn't working on a big budget to begin with. Mm-hmm. Um, I can't remember exactly what their budget was. I want to like, say it was like $50 million. I think I took a look a few days ago. It's around that ballpark. Yeah, 40 so it, was or 50. 50, it was $55 million, and at last check, they made $51 million of it back. And that's but just again, opening that, weekend, so that's decent, I guess. That's pretty good, yeah. right? It, um, you know, like it's, it's not bad for its opening weekend, given that we're in a pandemic. And it's right. on Amazon Prime, right? For at least that's in Canada. Exactly. So there's going to be a there's going to be a metric out there for them to look at and go, okay, we had this many rentals of it yep. in Canada, so we'll what would adjust that equate that to in a theater. Yeah, we'll adjust that to this, you know, like because people can't really go to theaters right now. Same with part of, like parts of the United States and whatnot. So there's got to be some sort of like genius out there that's that's figured it out, saying okay. If we get this many streams or this many rentals, this is what it equates to had theaters been open. And that's what I'm assuming they'll base it on, whether they greenlight a sequel or not. Because if they went strictly off box office, like there's so many movies that are going to suffer from that right now. So you can't look strictly at a box office these days, Mm -hmm. at least until things sort of return to normal. Um, okay, so like I said, I, I, they, they lead, they tease it towards the second movie. Um, I'm not going to get into anything yet. They will do another show when you do see it. Um, but I was just going to say also, like, let's look, they are going to make a second movie. Um, where was I going with this one down my notes? Um, okay. We'll go to my next question. Who's your favorite Mortal Kombat character, either in the game and then maybe their ad- adaptation into the theater as well? Uh, I always loved Reptile same. in the game because he was like the first like secret character I ever like encountered and he was super mysterious and i loved the green like ninja look the lime green was pretty badass yeah and then they like changed it as his games went on to make him more reptile like which makes sense and i sort of like i understand why they did it but i sort of like fell out of love with the character around that time because it just wasn't quite the same but Mm -hmm. i mean scorpion's always going to be up there for me or or raiden raiden was always one of my favorites especially with christopher lambert that's what i was going to say right I'm a big Christopher Lambert fan, and or Lambert, I guess, because he's he's Belgian or French or whatever he is, and I I loved his like uh, his wittiness. Yeah, like he was witty in the first movie, and kind of like 
serious but like it's all good sort of attitude so we went back yeah remember i went back and i said that clip a few days ago when he's talking about he's trying to be all serious and, and i looked at the comments yeah. on youtube and it was all like well what happened and that was when they were saying okay like the fate of the world depends on on you guys and then he goes ha -ha, and everybody's like what you're laughing right yeah he gives that <laughs> chuckle and he's like sorry yeah and he like, says sorry it's almost like the the deadpool like kind of speaking to the audience breaking the wall yeah, like, yeah, that chuckle, like, I have, the world depends on you. Uh, I'm sorry, guys, like, it is serious. Yeah, um, then Luke Kang and Sonya are, like, looking at him, like, whose side are you on here? Yeah, exactly. Um, I loved, I loved uh, the guy that played Shang Tsung in the first movie. Oh, he was incredible. Carrie, but I can't pronounce the rest of his name, and I'm, I don't want to disrespect him. They brought him back for the second season of the, uh, of the web series, which was kind of cool. But... but I, I like Scorpion and Sub Zero more because they really flushed out their backstory and, like, yeah. you know, Scorpion killing his family, but it was actually Quan Chi so that he could get Scorpion to, like, run his shit in the Nether Realm and stuff. And, like, they, they really added more to it than just, like, oh, that's the Yellow Ninja and that's the Blue Ninja. Yep. And then, like I said, they touch about, in the first one, they don't talk about it, but you look back and, uh, like, I told you, I, I know that. When I speak to you about like criticism on movies, you're you're kind of like tight lipped. You like a lot of things, but when I look back and you talked about the tournament from the second or sorry this movie that just came out to the original, for sure. In both of them, there's not really a bracket per se, and you don't really want that. But at the same time, I feel like in the second one, um, it's almost like fights just appear. I want to say, and it kind of happens a bit in the first one too, but I feel like it's more well put together in the first one. The second, the second movie was just, like, I mean, it was a mess from the get-go. Not like, Annihilation, uh, sorry, I'm talking about the reboot. Wait, wait, which reboot? Oh, this This movie? one. Yeah, this one I'm saying. Oh, I see, sorry. I'm forgetting about Annihilation completely. Like, I'm wiping it off like it didn't exist. I'm just saying, this, this reboot that came out last week compared to the original Mortal Kombat, in the first Mortal Kombat, even when the fights happen, like, remember, there's, like, crowds that happen, like, when Johnny Cage fights Goro, Sonya fights Kano... Like, there's yes. some that are kind of, like, organized and some that are just, like, it feels like there's fights that are going on and you're next in line kind of thing. I gotcha. Okay. Whereas in this one, it's almost, I, like I said, I don't want to say too much, but it just, like, there's there's not much order, let's call it. Right. Okay. I'm with you. I got it. Yeah. I, I totally and some ambushes that. as well, I want to say. Okay. Sort of like uh, when Scorpion jumped Johnny Cage in the forest. Yes. Yeah. Like, something like that. But it seems like a lot of them are kind of like that and a lot of also like gang fights in this one too so i understand why people will kind of be skeptic or, or, or you know critical of this um yeah, yeah um other things i had here i was gonna say that the cast in the first one as well like the cast in this one was good uh for sure like i said they did their part it was a good movie i wouldn't say it was incredible uh, the acting but it was good enough with the first one yeah. I, like i don't think they missed on any characters even when i think back to like kitana like she she had an amazing part in the movie with lou and like thailand or wherever they were for that shot yeah. I mean, Lyndon Ashby as Johnny Cage was... Incredible, too. Like, I loved Johnny Cage. And even Robin Shaw. Like, Robin Shaw as was Luke Kang. as Luke Kang. Like, he was a believable hero. You're like, yeah, that guy could be Luke Kang. For Not sure. could be, he was. Like, that's when I think about Luke Kang, it's Robin Shaw. Yeah, absolutely. I, what did I see him in... Uh, 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 well, I guess not more than a few years ago now, because it's old. He was in Death Race with... Uh, uh, Ian McShane and Jason Statham. Okay, I didn't see that. Uh, I guess that's a Statham movie? Yeah, it's a Jason Statham movie. He's in, like, prison, and it's like, oh, there's, like, a, a race, and you have to tweak out these cars and stuff, and, like, you just kill your opponent uh, with these, like, weaponized cars and stuff, and it's broadcast around the world, whatever. Like, Robin Shaw is one of the other drivers. Mm -hmm. I think, he, I want to say he was bald, too. Like, he didn't have his, like, long, flowing hair. Oh, really? I remember his long, wavy, humid hair from the first Mortal Kombat movie. <laughs> it was incredible hair back then. Oh, it was great. His last fight with Shang Tsung when it's all in his face and stuff and it's all poofy. Like, when he's yeah. avenging his brother's death. Incredible scene. Oh. Oh, remember yeah. when all the guys pop out from the surround? Like, they have, like, a circle and all the guys pop out and he fights? That scene, I go back and I watch it from time to time, Phil, obviously. There's that. There's, like, Bane and, and uh, Batman. There's, there's a few iconic fight scenes and every once in a while I stumble upon them. And I just get nostalgic. And that was an incredible one, too. Oh, and, that's, and again, you want to talk about Christopher Lambert and his uh, sort of non plus attitude is after they fight all those guys in the diner hall and he's just, like, laughing. He's like, oh, good job. But, like, what about all these guys? 
oh yeah, he goes, yeah, what are you going to do about them? And then they all pop out yeah. and Johnny Cage puts his head down. Yeah, I remember that one. Yeah, yeah that's like another that's, good one. That's, that encompasses the whole movie. Yeah. Um, I was going to say even, I, I just thought about, we said Batman, Batman Begins, and trying to start a series, because Mortal Kombat, I guess it, it is a series. There's so many characters you have to fit in. And if you think back to Batman Begins, it's almost like um, an origins. And I feel like they should have maybe done that with this as opposed to just throwing it, um, you know, a whole tournament in the first one if they have plans of actually doing multiple movies. Introduce the characters and their story. What do you yeah. think? Um, no, I understand that. I looked at the cast list uh, not long ago. I saw some random Mortal Kombat characters in it. Yeah. And I was kind of confused at first. But then I was like, no, you know what? They have to include, quote unquote, nobodies or like less popular Mortal Kombat characters as fodder because they, they wanted to show how deadly the fatalities are, but you can't have you, you can't know, kill off Luke Kang yeah. right off the hop, but yeah. like if you throw Raiko in there, nobody knows who the hell Raiko is, so when someone kills him it's like, oh that's super He's cool. expendable. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Expendable characters yeah. from the Mortal Kombat lore. That's what you want, because you, you want to show off those fatalities, so um, mm. I totally understand that, and it, it's tough. It's tough because Mortal Kombat's been around for so long that you know a lot of like the history. So to try and do a uh, start that from from new, but also fresh is hard. It's the same argument with like why do we have to see Bruce Wayne's parents die in every movie? In every like, movie, that's yeah. yeah. Like that's that's what makes him Batman. So that's why you're gonna see it in these origin movies. Same with Uncle, same with Uncle Ben dying. Like you want an origin story, like that's part of the origin, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um. Upcoming movies. I was gonna. Uh, any any last thoughts that on Mortal Kombat? Phil? Anything you want to talk about? No, no, it's good. Once I see it, we'll do a proper podcast on uh, what I thought of it. Sounds good. And then I was gonna say, um, I guess we can. I'll just throw the numbers because I took them from the Oscars yesterday. We talked about yep. this before we did the show. Not good. Uh, under ten million viewers. Um, and I found the numbers for twenty nineteen. It was twenty nine point six million. 23.6 million in uh, 2020, so they lost 6 million there, and then they lost 14 million, going down to 9.85. With all the theaters being closed for what it seems has been at least 12 months, uh, maybe just over now, what do you think the future for movies, the one I keep thinking of was Fast, whatever number they're at, they pushed that back, and then also the James Bond one we talked about last time we got together on the podcast. Uh, do you think that these movies are safe to be released in theaters or do you like, I guess we're kind of predicting what's going to happen with the COVID as well with this, but what do you see with those going forward? So I don't see, I don't see movies changing drastically. And again, I could be wrong about this. Like I, this is not, I'm not a soothsayer here, but like there's always going to be a large group of people that want the theater experience, especially for certain movies like Fast and Furious. You don't have to see a drama on the big screen necessarily, right? Like you don't have to say, I'm trying to think of like a recent drama, like uh, three billboards outside Missouri or whatever it was called. Yep. Like it's a drama movie, you know, you can see that at home. Like I watched Knives Out at home. I was just going to say Knives Out. That was the other one I was going to say, yeah. Yeah, because like I can watch that at home because it's not a big... Marvel type movie, movie with explosions. It's good, yeah. It's a good movie. You can get away with seeing that at home. But, but I wanted to see Ford v Ferrari on the big screen. Yeah. Because that's like that's a racing movie. I want to see that in that setting. I want to watch Justice League on the big screen. I don't, you know, my brother and I went and saw Kong versus God or Godzilla versus Kong right before they locked the movie theaters down again. And that one's one that, like, yeah, I have to see this on the big screen for the first time because watching it at home is not going to have the same experience. So I think there's always going to be an avenue for those movies, and those movies are going to rely on that until they find out some sort of profit share with these streaming services. To make the money back, because the cost of making the movies isn't going to go down. Yeah, it's not going to suddenly be cheaper to make movies because things are being streamed. Actors are still going to want to get paid what they're worth. So until they figure out some other revenue avenue from these streaming services, there'll still always be movie theaters. Unless, so yeah, yeah, well, you have to get back to that eventually. I was going to say with Mortal Kombat, you could probably get away with a lower budget because you're not paying, like you said, uh, a. Exactly. A-listers, right? But eventually, when you're making all these movies, like Fast and Furious, once again, you get in The Rock, Statham, all these top-notch guys, they're going to want their money. And yeah. if, if you can't figure out how to share that revenue, like you said, it's going to be a bit of an issue. Um, so do you think that you think that they're going to delay it again? Well, I guess is the question. I don't know. They push I mean, it to fall, right? End of summer, fall? Uh, I don't know about Fast 9. I can't remember when they pushed it to. 
but No Time to Die, the new James Bond movie, definitely got pushed to like October. Yeah. Same with Morbius. The new Marvel Morbius movie was supposed to be released like last month, like March, I think, and it's been pushed to this fall, if not already into next year. I saw some movies being released around Christmas time because obviously that's probably like other, that's like the one, I guess you could say like weekend or day where every year you're going to get those families to go because nothing else is open. That and the summer blockbusters. So I think yeah. that Christmas movie should be safe. We hope. Yeah, Christmas, Christmas I mean, that's the hope, right? Like that's, um, I want to just see. Because yeah, No Time to Die, we talked about it last time. Like it looks incredible. Daniel Craig's last, Last time portraying Bond, uh, we've talked uh, already about who we think is going to be next. We won't do that again, but it is it is always big shoes to kind of fill whenever you're talking about the next Bond. Daniel Craig, a lot of people didn't like the choice at first, but he's done a great job. I I'm a big fan of what Daniel Craig's done with it. I've liked him in, in all of them. Uh, I know everyone was worried about oh, blonde James Bond, but like he was a different he was a different Bond compared to Pierce Brosnan, which they needed. They had to change, right? Because you don't want a carbon copy of it. And right. I, I liked them. I mean, Quantum of Solace was kind of, I could take it or leave it, but Skyfall is one of my favorites. Like, it's one of my Casino favorite Casino Royale and Skyfall, yeah. Never mind just, like, Daniel Craig, but, like, um, one of my favorite Bond movies. Army of the Dead is another one that's coming out, but it's only a Netflix release. I'm excited about that. I just, I brought up the list of stuff that's... Being released? Here, yeah. Um, I'm just trying to see. Fast 9 is supposed to be June 29th. June 29th, yeah. I don't yeah, know. <laughs> In the States, they should be fine. It's just Canada and worldwide, really, right? Like, and yeah. I don't know what capacities are like in the States. I know the theaters were, you know, open, but I just don't know capacities. And the same here. Yeah. Like, I went to go see a movie uh, with my dad right before the lockdown happened, around March March 10th, give or take, last year. I went to go see a, it was a Harrison Ford movie about a dog. I don't remember it. Did you see it? Oh, uh, Into the Wild, yeah. It was pretty uh, decent. Yeah. I saw that yeah. one. It was pretty decent. And then in the summer, I think I told you about it. Um, a lot of people didn't even know theaters were open. But I saw that Vin Diesel action movie that didn't get the best reviews. Oh, um, oh, God, it's up to my tongue. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, he's like a hired, they pretty much brainwash him to be like a, a hired killer for the government. Yes. It was decent. Yeah. Like if you're, like I said, if you're going to the movies knowing what to expect, it's it's exactly what you're going to expect. Um, yeah. Other than that, I was going to say, uh, you said Morbius is coming out. Any other Marvel or DC movies? Spider-Man, I know, is supposed to come out this year as well? Yeah, it's supposed to be December, Spider-Man. Is it something about uh, coming home or something? Home. Yeah, Spider-Man No Way Home no with way home. Alfred Molina back as Doc Ock. I love Alfred Molina. You want to take a second to talk about our favorite uh, Spider-Man villains? He's got to be one of them. Yeah. Like, he's got to be up there. So does... Uh, Norman uh, Osborn. What's his face? Um, uh, Willem Dafoe as Green Goblin. Like, he's another one that's got to be up there. I think... So, I think that Dafoe was born to play uh, Norman Osborn. And also, yeah. whoever played uh, Jameson was also born to play Jameson. <laughs> J.K. Simmons. Oh my yeah. god. Like, they look exactly like the characters. They did an amazing job. Even the voices they did were incredible. Oh yeah. And that's why I was excited to see J.K. Simmons back at the end of the last Spider-Man movie. Spoiler alert if anybody hasn't seen Spider-Man Far From Home. <laughs> yeah, and, and that how many years has that been? Three years since Far From Home's been out, right? Uh, Far From Home... I want to say three years because I'm pretty sure it was the same year that Endgame came out. I think it was right before Endgame came out, yeah. No, it was after. It was after Endgame. Okay. And then Loki has his own movie that's coming out as well, right? Well, he's got his own TV show. It's oh, it's a TV show. It's not a movie. No, it's a TV show going to Disney Plus in... Uh, I saw that. Next month? That looks May, pretty maybe good. June. Too, yeah. um, uh, and then in case I missed it, Batman. What's going on with that? Um, I remember it was uh, the English actors playing him. Yes. Um, oh, from Twilight. Robert Pattinson. Robert Pattinson, yeah. Yeah, that's next year. So apparently all that they've shot for that movie is what we saw in the trailer. Like, that's it. Like, they haven't shot the whole movie. The movie, I don't think, is even done production yet. It's not coming out until next year anyway. But scripting is but done? What's that? Scripting is done for that movie? Yeah, scripting is done. They've been shooting it. They've been, like, they've been shooting it still. That's mm -hmm. not a problem because, like, COVID and stuff's kind of slowed them down. But, like, we got the trailer for it, and that was it. Like, they haven't really shot much past that. They probably have now. Um but that's not coming out until next year, I don't think. I don't even think it's late next year. Yeah. Um, let me, uh, I guess, it, 
Give me your favorite Batmans. Ben Affleck's probably my favorite. Batman okay, so is he, is he your favorite uh, Batman or is he your favorite Bruce Wayne? So here's my thing. He's my favorite combination of the, of the two of them. Because okay. um, there hasn't really been an actor that's nailed both of them. Michael Keaton came the closest because he got into the mindset, and this is what I really liked about Michael Keaton's Batman, was he always saw it as like, Batman's not the alter ego Bruce Wayne is, right? When he's Batman, when he's got the suit on, like that's when he feels like him, mm -hmm. right? Whereas his Bruce Wayne is kind of like awkward and like, you know, not certain of like, not like he's confident but not certain of himself because he doesn't want to be Bruce Wayne. He wants to be Batman. And I love that take on it. And Christian Bale kind of sort of did it in the first movie, the first like Batman Begins. Yeah. Like the scene he's like, oh, like I just I bought the hotel so I can do whatever I want, right? Like yeah. that. That's a Bruce Wayne thing to do. Yeah. But but then Bale lost me because like a it was hard because he was so outclassed by the other actors that played villains like Heath Ledger's Joker, Tom Harvey's Bane, even Cillian Murphy as Scarecrow. Like they really took away from Christian Bale's performance. Not that there was anything wrong with Christian Bale's performance, but like you really focused on the villains more than you did on him as Batman. That reminds me of when DiCaprio finally won an Oscar and Tom Hardy did a better job in that movie. Yes, for The Revenant. Yes. yes. I remember watching that movie and that was when all the, the buzz was going, oh, Leo never, because he just, he didn't win for Wolf of Wall Street. There were so many movies he didn't win. And then I watched it and I was like, Tom Hardy was better in this movie than DiCaprio was, but they labeled him as a supporting actor. So he got away of both, did both, did Tom Hardy end up winning supporting or no? I don't know if he I don't even think he won now that I think about it. Least. He should have won, but he didn't. Tom Hardy's yeah. incredible. Like he's a, he's a good dude and he's a, he's a badass actor. He's he's oh, he my him and Brad Pitt. Are, I th I think are my favorite actors, and Brad I don't, I don't even person. know who else comes in for personal Brad favorites. Pitt is the one that's up there too, because he can do almost anything. Yeah, that, he's done everything. Yeah, except play I a superhero. Uh, Ocean's Eleven the other day, actually. I watched that Ocean. last summer. Uh, maybe yeah, it was well, maybe it was like September or so. But yeah, I watched that. Yeah. I watched Eleven and Twelve back again. I was so nostalgic to watch those ones. Oh yeah, absolutely. So I, I would say Ben Affleck is my favorite combination of the two, like in terms of looks and how he portrays it. That's why I want to see more. I want to see him do his own movie. You know? well, that's what I was gonna say. Like, did you? Did they not give him a fair shot? Then they're done with him as Batman. They keep. Well, he said he's done with it. I what I under, from what I've read is that because I'm not close to the situation. I don't know. Like Ben's not my buddy. I'm not gonna call him on the phone. But like <laughs> from what I've read from reports is that like he was so beat down by Warner Brothers when they did Justice League and they did all those reshoots and Joss Whedon being a POS but he just kind of like said like okay that's enough like if this is what it, it's going to be I'm not going to do it and he sort of just like and he hung it up but he's coming back to the Flash movie and he said that that's going to be it so hopefully we get a good representation of that and hopefully the fans get what they want yeah um, anything else in terms of movies you wanted to touch on uh, I don't think so. Everything else we uh, we covered pretty well. All right. Um, so yeah, other than that, I guess what we'll do then is we'll come back then and we'll talk about um, Mortal Kombat when you talk about it then, and then we'll we'll do the gym stuff then as well because I, I know you told me off camera there's some stuff that's going down um, in your neck of the woods. So we'll leave that uh, suspense for the next one. But um, okay. yeah, so with, with Mortal Kombat, I'll wait for you to see that. Um, if I if I had to give it like a rating or something, I'd say it was a solid seven, seven and a half. Yeah, I accept the, that, especially as a video game uh, movie. Yeah, like it's it, like I said, it's worth the watch. I'm really hoping, similar to Suicide Squad, that they kind of look. Suicide Squad was a massive bomb, but just in terms of like look at it, see what you did correctly, add some new characters and have a better storyline, be a little bit more straight lined as opposed to taking you on you know the multiple subplots and that kind of stuff, and then come back and. You know, kill a second movie. That being said, what have you heard with Suicide Squad? I know they're doing another one, right? Yes, they're doing. Uh, they're doing um, one with James Gunn directing it because after it was kind of a long, convoluted thing. But like Marvel fired him because of some tweets he had from years and years ago, which was the thing to do, right? Fire people because of what they said in the past. In 2012. So they, yeah. they fired him. Like same thing they did with Kevin Hart in the Oscars, right? It's like, yeah. oh, Kevin Hart, we can't have him host the Oscars. He said controversial things. Like, yeah, he's a comedian. <laughs> they all did. Yeah. Like, exactly. Yeah, like, so anyway, so Marvel fired James Gunn. DC scooped him up right away to do the Suicide Squad, which is what they've done and what they're releasing. 
And then Marvel's like, oh, okay, we, we take it back because, you know, you went to your other girlfriend, so we want you back now. So wow. he's going back to do another Guardians movie, but that that's neither here nor there. But the new Suicide Squad looks really good. I'm really excited. Idris Elba, John mm-hmm. Cena, the, the cast looks good. Yeah, I so saw Idris Elba's in there. And who's he playing again? Dead. He's, yeah, he's playing... Um, Oh, what the heck's his name? Not Deadshot, right? Because I remember we talked about this. It's the other one. Yeah, because they, they they originally cast him as Deadshot because Will Smith wasn't coming back. But then they decided you, to change his character in case Will Smith wanted to come back. Yeah, you said they're like, leaving the door open for him, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Which I which I really liked, you know, because um, it it's nice it's nice to see in that uh, they're giving Will Smith another chance if he wants to do it. He Once should. More, he should. Important. If they do it, like I said, if they if they can make it like a, a good, you know, like the Batman original ones, with, well, not original, but the Bale kind of level quality of movies and then like any movie that Marvel's made, if they can really hit this one out of the park and Will Smith comes back. Because we talked about it before. Everybody that was in the Suicide Squad killed their part. It was just the story that sucked. Yeah, because they, because again, Marvel had to go in Interfere, not Marvel, sorry. DC Warner Shaw and and stick their nose in it. Yeah. Yeah, so him and then also there was that guy, Joe Mangello or whatever his name was from Magic Mike that's in the movie as well. Uh, he's not in Suicide Squad. He was in the Justice League and he's pushing now to get his own either HBO series or like do the Batman, um, the Batman movie with him as the villain, which was the original plan. And his character is similar to like Deadshot as well, right? He's like a hired gun. Yeah, Deathstroke. He's the mercenary. Deathstroke. He's actually right. he was the. I remember Deadpool's sort of a copy of him, mm-hmm. like in terms of like looks and the fact that they're mercenaries. But then like Deadpool did his own thing. Um, but yeah, Deathstroke, a hired hired mercenary, you know, trained trained by Ra's al Ghul in some iterations. He was known as the Terminator in the original comics, ah. which they don't use that anymore for you know obvious reasons. Yeah. <laughs> And um, any any word on if uh, Ryan Reynolds, are they doing a Deadpool 3 or anything like that? So he says they're doing a Deadpool 3, um, which is kind of surprising, especially because it's like, you know, um, it's Marvel. But he said they're doing a Deadpool 3 and they got the R rating. So oh, I good. don't know if it's going to be set in the MCU or if it's just going to be another R rated Deadpool movie. But they are definitely doing it. That I'm looking forward to because the first Deadpool is one of my favorite movies of all time and comic book movie for sure. Oh, 100 percent, and it's Ryan Reynolds. Like it's he was born for that. Like that's that's his. That, that's another guy born for the role, Ryan Reynolds. Uh, sorry, I, I don't know how I left him out. He's he's in my top three of actors for sure with Hardy and uh, Brad Pitt and yeah, Ryan for sure. Reynolds. No, for no, sure. I, I can totally understand uh, that. And like even when he's <laughs> remember when he, Deadpool plays Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> What's that? Deadpool plays Ryan Reynolds. Ryan Reynolds doesn't play Deadpool. Yeah, that's yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Okay, I guess we'll wrap this one up, Phil. Um, and then, like I said, we'll get together maybe next week. We'll see if when you get together with your brother and watch uh, Mortal Kombat, and we'll talk about that, and we'll talk about um, your workouts, which obviously anybody that's been watching it, you've been killing it, and uh, we'll talk about the mental health thing, of course, with the with the gyms being closed and people trying to get workouts as well. Okay. Perfect. Sounds good. All right, and uh, thanks, Phil, for coming on, and we'll see you guys next time on the blog.